This isn't a video about the war in Ukraine, military, anything like that. We're opening up the beehive today. All right, so getting everything together that we actually need to get into the hive. We've got a smoker. I'll show you how we light that in a second. Uh, real, actual beekeeping gloves that they can't sting through. They're kind of bulky and hard to use at times, but I used to use just like regular gardening gloves, but got dinged up one too many times last year. So we're actually going to put on all the gear. A uh, little hive tool, scraping tool to help get the frames out. The helmet and mask. I guess you don't actually need a helmet, but it keeps the keeps the net in. Put that on. And then the secret beekeeping. OCP jacket, old army fatigues. They These ones are like too big and a couple years old. They're perfect, man. The bees can't sting through this, which is like all that matters. You just have to have enough confidence that you can keep working and not get stung left and right. So you got something old like this? Perfect. All right, if you haven't figured it out already, I don't exactly know what I'm doing when it comes to taking care of bees. Uh, it's kind of something you learn as you go, which makes it fun. It's kind of intimidating. Um, there's also like unlimited amount of opinions on this stuff. So whatever you do, if you decide to get into this, uh, be sure somebody's going to tell you you're doing it wrong, but there's going to be somebody else telling you that you're doing it right or not doing it enough. So whatever, it's kind of fun to tinker around with. Uh, with that, we're going to get the smoker going. So the arguments I've heard for a smoker, and you'll watch the bees actually move out of the way when the smoke hits the, uh, hits the hive. The argument that I've heard as to why smokers work is that it simulates a fire in the area, obviously. It makes the bees hurry up and try to eat as much honey as they can with the idea that they would have to exit the hive quickly if the fire actually comes there. So they get preoccupied trying to scarf down as much food as they can, knowing they might have to go without for a period of time. And in the process, they get a little lethargic and aren't as interested in flying out and stinging you. I don't know if that's actually the case. What I know is when we smoke the bees, when we put just a little bit in the hive, it, they really do calm down quite a bit. So here we go. All right, so started with a couple magnolia leaves down in there, just because we have a bunch sitting around. I've used all sorts of stuff in a smoker. I think in a perfect world, dried grass seemed to be the best, but don't always have that sitting around. God, this thing goes out. I know I'm not doing this right, because the dang thing goes out constantly. All right, like 10 minutes later, we're actually making progress here. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Some leaves right on top. Pat it down a little bit. Make sure we get some flames. And that should be good for now. Got the little microphone in here. I have no idea how that's gonna work. All right, these are the two colonies. We're gonna get into this one today. It's pretty new. Just installed a uh, package of bees there about two weeks ago. This one looks good. It was in there maybe a week or two ago, so we're going to give them a little bit more time before opening that back up. All right, smoker's still going. Honestly, I feel like the big test here is going to be, can I film this and do the inspection by myself? One way to find out. All right, we got a little brick on top just to keep any raccoons or anything from tipping the hive over. Not an issue we've had. This is a feeder we added. We'll get that beetle off. We added a feeder for the uh, new bees just to get them some extra food at the start of the season, help them build up the hive a little bit. Not a lot of activity here. We'll go ahead and give it a little smoke. Pop the top, a little smoke up top. Again, we're not trying to like completely smoke them out just for them to get a little scent of it. So a couple bees on the top, make sure the queen isn't there. Set it aside. And it's time to pop her open. So there's a couple things we're looking for here in this inspection. So we installed this uh, package of bees. That was a little sloppy. We installed this package of bees. Again, make sure the queen's not here on top before we set this down. Give you a look at what the inside of the hive looks like. So this was a package of bees we got a couple weeks ago. And what we're doing right now at about the two to three week mark is making sure that, first off, they're still there. Um, but we wanna see that the queen, we already noticed that the queen was accepted 
by the colony, which is good. Sometimes they'll just kill her. Those packages, they didn't do that. We found the queen last week. We're going to see if we can find the queen again. And then we want to see if she started to lay. So we'll look for some eggs. We shouldn't see any larvae at this point. That'd be a little bit early. Use the hive tool to kind of pry some of these frames out. These ones on the outside shouldn't be really used at all at this point. I did put some older frames in there. Yeah, you can kind of see some pollen, a little bit of nectar in there. Set these to the side. You wouldn't expect to see the queen on the outside frames at this point. She's probably more towards the middle, so that's where we're going to shift to start really doing an inspection. I used some older frames from a hive that we lost last year, um, which is a little bit risky. But we were, uh, we were able to reuse some of the honeycomb from those. Here you go. I feel like a lot of people don't get to see this right here. This is always something cool. So in this shot, you can see, let's find one. Here's a male bee right there. See how much bigger that one is than the others? Very few male bees in a colony. All the workers are females, queen's female. Males are called drones. Their only job, you get these bees down a little bit more. You watch them kind of move with the smoke. So the only jobs the male bees have is to breed. When a queen comes out, a queen breeds once in her life. She'll breed with between, I think, 10 and 20 different male bees. There we go. There's the queen. I uh, lost her. Yeah, there she goes. Right in the middle of the frame. How about this? We got the queen out and moving. See how much different she is from the rest of the bees? That long abdomen. All right. We'll let her get back to work here. It is so hard to find a queen in some of these busier hives. We'll take a look at that white hive another time. And there's so many bees in there that actually spotting the queen is so hard. Sometimes you can get a little mark on their back. Here you go. One more thing worth showing here. So this is frame, a lot of pollen, but do you see the yellow bags on some of these? There you go. Is that bee carrying the pollen around? How cool is that? But this is, for as many bees as you're seeing here, this is actually not a very busy hive quite yet. Let's. There we go. Look at that. You see the larva? Ah, we're going to get a good look at this. That's a really positive sign. So the queen, that means the queen is laying. Which you would expect at this point. There you go. You kind of see some of the larva in there. It's perfect. All right. You seen that bee lady on TikTok that can just do this without any sort of protection at all? She's a lot braver than I am. So there have been, it's not the reason I started doing this. We're going to close up shop here very slowly, but surely I'll bring this over so you can see a little better. Um, it's not the reason I started beekeeping. I just thought it'd be fun. It's a nice little hobby, but there have been, 
some studies done to show that working with bees, because you really got to kind of stay calm while you're doing this, can be good for PTSD. So there's actually some veterans groups helping folks get into beekeeping. I've not taken advantage of those organizations or linked up with them or anything like that, but I probably should. That'd be a really good thing to be a part of. So, all right, with that, go ahead and add the cover back on now. The bees are already kind of sneaking out the top there. Anytime I put up a bee video, people ask about how hard it is to get into it. I feel like it's really, really easy. Um, you need you don't need as much space as you think they generally leave you alone and you kind of figure it out as you go like i've made a ton of mistakes i'm I'm sure of it just like everything i do there's a ton of mistakes made but clean up some of the entrance here for them it's very like reasonable to get started and in terms of price i think this whole setup frames and everything is probably eighty dollars. Um, probably another sixty dollars for this wonderful beekeeping setup, and then on or about the bees are the most expensive, like two hundred fifty dollars for the actual bees. All right, a couple notes I forgot to mention out there. Uh, first off, we're doing the inspection on a sunny day, middle of the day. I think it's about eleven o'clock right now. So you want to do these hive inspections when the fewest amount of bees are home, right? You're breaking into their house. You don't want many of them there to to find you and potentially get upset. So uh, the bees, they're sleeping all night, they're waiting for the sun to come up in the morning and then they return in the evening. So the hive is the most crowded uh, when it's a little colder out, when it's raining out, they don't fly. But when the sun is out middle of the day, that's when a good number of the bees will be out foraging. So a little easier to get in and out of the hive and didn't get stung today, so that's a success. In terms of maintenance, it's like really easy. We got a dog too and you know, every time we go out of town, somebody's gotta take care of the dog, we gotta take him to boarding, stuff like that. The bees are supposed to take care of themselves, right? Like we, we've got some feeders set up out there for the new hive just because we want to kind of help them get on their feet. And we might feed them a little bit come winter or if there's an early frost or anything like that. But realistically, bees are supposed to be able to do all this on their own. So go on a get away for the weekend. It's no problem. Leave for a month at a time. It doesn't matter. Um, the hives we have, the hive we have up and running right now, I won't check that for weeks at a time. And this inspection here, you just saw the whole thing start to finish. It takes more time getting ready for it because I'm a big baby and don't want to get stung. But I mean, you're in the hive for three, four, five minutes, maybe. It's just, I don't know. It's not, it's not a massive obligation you're taking on by getting into it. So shoot me a note if you're interested in, in trying it out. I think it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, just thought it was worth making a video about this because it's, it's part of my day. It's not all Ukraine, war, military, army, stuff like that. Um, even if this is done wearing army stuff. But try to uh, get another video together when I get into the bigger hive because the number of bees in that larger hive, it's like, it's not comparable. Like every single frame is overflowing with bees. So it's a little more interesting. You kind of get more of that, uh, like right on the edge if it's either calming or terrifying, depending how you feel about bees, because there's thousands of them on every single frame. But that'll be fun. I'll show you all next time.